Hi folks, it's Woody over at Splice. There's an exercise we do in the Media Composer 101 course um, where we take this logo for the Lord of the Rings and we recreate it in Marquee. And I just wanted to share that with you now. Um, the trick about the title is that there's a lot of different characters and words and some of the words have individual stylings that seem to be, seem to be applied on a per character basis. For example, uh, the letter L is larger than O, R, and D and it's a uh, little serif, uh, which is the decoration on the end of the character, touches the uh, the O, the word the is capital, and it kind of sits down there, rings, um, has different positions for I versus NGS. Um, so if you were to make this, it would be kind of tricky without knowing some of the tips or tricks that you can use in Marquee uh, to manipulate characters on a per-character basis. So that's what this topic is about. I want to start off just by letting you know that every, not really every, but uh, the organization of characters inside of Marquee, Marquee uh, is such that they're in a, a, a container, and that's what this red box represents. It's a, it's a, a character's container, and you can have one or more characters in the container, and when you take a look at Marquee's layers view, it's way over here, uh, over here in layers, I'm going to spin down layer one, we can see that there's a text box, that's what I'm referring to as this red container. And then inside of that, there's the individual characters. And you could have a, another text box. I'm just going to select this. I'm going to copy it with uh, Command or Control C, and then Command or Control V to duplicate, which is basically, or paste, which is basically our way to duplicate uh, text boxes and any object you can draw in the marquee uh, work area. So now I have text box one and text box two. And if you take both of those together, so take the first one, hold down, shift, select the second one, so they're both selected. You can even group those together into their own containers. So now down here in the layers view, it says uh, group, uh, sorry, the, the group is just called group, and then inside there's text box one and text box two. And when you're applying formatting, which is anything over here in the quick titles properties, so you're adjusting maybe the lighting or the gradient or drop shadows or the edge properties, you can apply it at any level in this hierarchy. You can apply it to the group, in which case it applies to everything inside the group. For example, if I select this group, so now it's active, and I change the base color to, let's go with something like a tangerine, uh, so like, kind of like that. Now everything inside the group has got that style applied. But you can also just click on an individual text box and apply the style to that. In this case, it overrides the parent and it has its own local copy of, uh, of its color settings. Like in this case, base is being a really ugly lime green. Uh, you can spin that down, the text box down inside into this container, and then you can just grab letter Q and you could make that a different color. But you don't have to stop at just Q. You could also manipulate its, uh, its font itself. Let's make Q into maybe a Verdana font like that and we're just going to do a rotation on it on Z. That's the axis that comes directly towards you. Kind of spins like this, kind of like little jazz hands. And uh, yeah, so when you have all these properties that you can adjust for transformations, you have the colors that you can apply, they're always applied on whatever object you've selected up in the main kind of canvas area. Uh, but you can also directly select down in the layers list. So we make this a bit bigger, we can see how everything is structured. And whenever you apply one of these settings, um, it applies to that object, so in this case letter Q, and any objects that might be underneath it. But text box, uh, if I select this container for text box, I could change that and maybe make it blue. And of course, even though I'd given Q a different color, that's now been overridden, and now only, uh, only blue is the characters that come out. But since I didn't actually change the font, the font attribute on the letter Q, the font property, is still whatever it was set to before. So if I now change this whole word to be something else, let's choose a, oh, I don't know, Cooper plate, copper plate. Uh, we get this, and then if you decide you just want one of the characters to be different, you could come over and maybe hit Q or R, and you could even scale it directly in here, making it bigger. And then if you use the rotation tool, you can even spin it around directly with the direct manipulation tool like that. So now our R is spinning backwards. And we'll just position it like this. Already you can see that just knowing that you can step in to a text box and select the individual characters should help you understand how we're able to really easily make a logo like this one in Marquee. So the first thing that you would 
well, the first thing that I would do if I was starting off, I'm just going to delete those. Uh, I'm going to reset my tool set to the basic, so everything goes back to where it belongs. And the first thing that you would do if you were to approach this project is you probably kind of figure out how many words you want, because every time you make a word, you essentially make a text box. So uh, I'd have the as one word, uh, Lord as another, rings as another. Of the, I'd probably do that as just one text box because it's the same font, they're the same height, uh, everything about them is the same, so just pressing enter gets me, you know, uh, the word the on the next line. And then the Fellowship of the Ring can be uh, another text box. So that's really one, two, three, four, five, five text boxes. I'm going to go ahead and just rough that in right now. Hit the text tool, or you can use letter T on the keyboard. And the, it's all caps, cause we can see that, so that's that. Um, then the next thing I want to do, just ignore that, that didn't happen. Uh, the next thing I want to do is add the next word, so tap down here, Lord, and I'm just going to copy paste it because it's easier than dragging another box out. And this one will be uh, the, and select that, copy paste, shove the copy over here, text tool, edit. Uh, so command A is what I use to select all the characters just to replace them with the word rings, and finally, I'll do this another way. I'll just hit letter T for text, and drag a box out where the text box goes, and this will be caps lock on the fellowship of the, let's put this fellowship of the avid, make it localized. All right, and we'll take this box. Now the text box is one of the more confusing things, a little bit in marquee, because the text box doesn't really grow in size. If I just shove these over here for a moment, let's just address that. Uh, the text box doesn't grow in size, so the original size that I made it is this big, and then even though I've typed more things into it, it doesn't get any bigger. So you have to modify the container yourself if you want to get it bigger. Now the container controls things like word wrap. So you can see when I make it more narrow, like this, the word avid is able to drop down, while fellowship not having a space or a hyphen in it, it's not able to drop down. It's just going to push outside the box's boundaries. And to set up the justification, you use paragraph justification at the top, same thing you do in Microsoft Office or Microsoft Word. Uh, so we can make it all the way wide like this or center align like this. For us, I'm just going to make it to the left because as long as it's as big as the text box, you're going to be fine. The text box can be used for a couple things, though. If you have uh, Save Title, Save Action turned on, so up here I can turn that on, then I know I should be keeping my text within the inner box. So if I set it to the edge like this and I pull the other one way over like this, and then I set it to center. Now I know that text is at least in the center of my screen because that's always whatever that is, 20% in from the edge. Uh, and then it's just aligned within that. So you could use it for aligning things within your canvas. Uh, turn that off. Um, it's also used when you work with gradients. So when I apply a gradient and I get rid of this ugly local gradient and apply a container gradient instead, well, that's what it means by container. The container is the red box. That's the box that contains all of the characters. So if I spin this text box down, this text box is a container and inside it's, well, there's all my characters. And you can see that the gradient goes from black on the left to white on the right and that's exactly the pattern that you see and that's defined by the, the size of the text box. So if you make this more narrow like this, it seats, it's still black on the left side of the text box, not the left side of the characters or the words, and it gets fully white on the right side. So if you pull this really far like this, you get a really nice gradient all the way across. You can't even see the letter T. At least I can't see the letter T. Uh, so gradients are applied based on the text box. Text box also controls how we align the characters for justification. And the text box does not scale automatically. So as you type more stuff into it, it doesn't grow. Though there is a little neat trick with it. If you hold down the Alt key on a PC or the Option key on a Mac, it's the same key really, uh, Alt and Option. If you hold it down and then you drag the box, it does a dynamic resize, just like you'd expect to find over in maybe something like Illustrator. Uh, but if you don't hold down the Alt key, then all you're doing is changing the size of the container but not the characters within. So I can easily make this text really big. Or in our case, I want to make it really small. So I'm going to bring it down like that. Pull it over like this, and I'll worry about that later. For now, I'll just shove it off to the side. We want to rough in this logo, so we'll take the word Lord, and we'll put it over here. We'll make it kind of big. So I'm going to hold down the Alt key, and drag it kind of like this. 
force of habit, I hold down shift, uh, thinking that it's going to constrain, but it actually doesn't. The word the up here, put the word of and the. So here's another example of that text box. Um, as a container, it needs to be resized. So I usually make it big enough to hold the whole thing. I do want it to wrap around. I do want it to be centered, yeah, because they're centering it over there. And then holding the Alt key down and dragging one of the corners, you have to wait, you, uh, wait until you get the little up arrow. Hold down the Alt key, grab the, up, uh, the corner, rather, and bring it down like this. And there's a little... It's a little bit too small. Let's just pull it back like that. Uh, we have a quick problem with our leading. Leading is the distance between two lines. So over here, you can see that there's almost no space between the word, the line of and the line with the in it. And over here, there is um, some space in it. So there's different ways that you can fix up. You can fix up that uh, just by coming into the text box and holding down your Alt key and using.